is a Promax model of an amine sweetening unit. Promax is the most rigorous, most accurate, and most widely used simulator in the world for amine sweetening processes. Promax will give you the ability to compare different solvents, compare temperatures, pressures, loadings, reboiler duties, and countless other aspects of an amine sweetening unit. I'm going to show you right now how to do an initial design of an amine sweetening unit. Let's imagine for a moment that we have a sour gas that needs to be sweetened. This sour gas, as you can see here, is 45 degrees Celsius, 73 bar, and 250 million standard cubic feet per day. Let's take a look at how sour this gas really is. Right here, you can see that it is 6% CO2 and 7% H2S. And the majority is going to be methane at 73%. This gas is going to proceed through a knockout drum to the contactor. In the contactor, it's going to be contacted with an amine solvent. And through this column, there's going to be various chemical reactions that take place that is going to remove H2S and CO2 and give you a sweet gas. The sweet gas here, you can see, is less than 1 ppm H2S and roughly 5 ppm CO2. So you can see that this sweetens it quite a bit from the 6 and 7 percent that we initially started with. The rich amine is going to be rich in the acid gases and that's going to go over here into the regenerator and regenerate. And then we're going to send a lean amine back over to our contactor to do the process all over again. This process is different than most other gas processes you find in your gas plant or in your refinery. This one has a chemical reaction that takes place alongside a physical absorption. So it's very important to have an electrolytic simulator to do this, like Promax, which is why Promax is so widely used for the amine sweetening application. Now, we have our sour feed of 250 million standard cubic feet per day. Let's see how big our contactor needs to be in order to sweeten that. If we double click on our contactor, we're going to see that you're, when you are designing, you want to put in a fraction flooding. Generally speaking, you want to have a fraction flooding in your design of 70%. This will give you some operational leeway in case you have more or less flow in the future. With 70% flooding, you'll see that Promax calculates your diameter of roughly 4.3 or 4.4 meters. It's quite a big column. The absorber design is largely dependent upon the sour gas feed that you have to your column. So a smaller column will be needed for lower feed of your gas. I have a number of these topics that are circled here. And I'm going to go through these one by one. First of all, I'm going to start here with your air cooler. An amine sweetening, you generally want to have at least a 5 degrees Celsius temperature approach. That means that stream 12 here needs to be 5 degrees higher than stream 1. In this case, the ambient temperature is much warmer than most other places in the world, which is why you're going to see a temperature here of 60 degrees Celsius. You'll remember from the beginning that we had 45 degrees Celsius as our inlet. 
So that means we have a 15 degree temperature approach, which is perfectly acceptable. If you can drive this temperature down further, that would be more beneficial for the amine sweetening process, especially if you're trying to selectively remove H2S over CO2. The point of this process here is to bring this sweet gas of H2S down to below 6 ppm H2S and 2.5% CO2, although you'll find throughout all of this that we never even come close to 2.5% CO2, even on the more selective processes that we can look at. Second, we're going to look at stream 10 and our rich mean. These two are linked together because the flow rate of your amine or of your solvent is going to determine the rich approach that you have in your rich amine. Looking down here, our rich amine has a total acid gas loading of 0 0.4. This is calculated by Promax based on the flow rate of your solvent and the amount of acid gas that it removes from your sour gas. This is a rigorous calculation that will give you an indication of whether or not you're going to have corrosion through the rich part of your plant. Depending on your solvent, this may or may not be a problem. So let's take a look at what our solvent is. If I double click here, you see that I have a solvent of 45 weight percent DGA. DGA is capable of reaching a rich loading of 0 0.4 without causing corrosion. Therefore, this should be okay. However, if I was looking at DEA or MEA, this would present us with a problem. Next, we're going to look at this here, stream number three. This temperature here is going to be important. It's important for two reasons. It is a way of conserving heat. As we provide steam here into this reboiler, it would be good if we're able to recover some of this heat that's coming out of the reboiler and put it right back into our regenerator. Secondly, we don't want to create too much gas inside of our lean rich exchanger because that's going to be at a very high velocity and probably probably at a very high uh, acidity causing corrosion. So we want to maintain a delicate balance here which traditionally speaking has been to keep this at about 100 degrees Celsius. Now this is well documented for a solvent like MDEA, but with, D, but with DGA, that may not be the case. So this is going to require some simulation to figure out what the right temperature is going to be. Next, we have the steam and the lean amine. These are linked together here because the amount of steam that you provide is going to determine the quality of your lean amine. This steam here can be based on a few different parameters. You can tell Promax to record, to provide the amount of steam that you need in order to maintain a, any particular lean amine that you like, lean loading that you like in your lean amine, or you can do the more traditional route, which will make the steam a particular ratio with the solvent circulation. In this case, we are using a ratio of the steam to the solvent circulation. In order to do your optimization and in order to do your initial design, it is highly recommended to use the Promax scenario tool. What I did is I went up here and I added an Excel workbook to my Promax file. And then we go over here to my Excel workbook and you can see the work that I've done here. I have many different amines that I am comparing. I'm comparing DGA 
DEA, MDEA, and MDEA with piperazine. I'm comparing those with their appropriate rich loadings and various steam ratios. And I'm looking at what my circulation rate is going to be required for each one of those, what my sweet gas H2S is going to be predicted for each one of those cases, same with the CO2. And what I'm really interested in is my reboiler duty because this is going to be the largest cost associated with operating my unit. So I want to minimize my reboiler duty and now I have a very convenient way of comparing each one of my solvents to each other and seeing the reboiler duty associated with each one. Looking at this reboiler duty, I can see that I have a minimum right here of 61. Let's see which case this is. This is MDEA with pip bruising, a rich loading of 0.45, steam ratio of one, uh, but there's a problem. It is not meeting my H2S spec. So this one is not for me. So I'm going to look at my reboiler duty. And what's the next lowest one? Well, I have this one here, 67 megawatts. It's meeting my H2S. Uh, PPM required. It's well below my 2.5% uh, CO2. Scroll over here and I can see that it is my pure MDEA, 45 weight percent MDEA, and a steam ratio of 1. So this tells me that this is going to be the place where I'm going to want to start my initial design. In order to create this table, what I did is I created a scenario. I go over here to my scenario tool. I have here my different variables. I have my DGA strength, which is this column, DEA strength, which is here. I have my MDEA, piperazine, all of these are in here. And then I have my rich loading as well. My steam ratio is going to be in here if I scroll down. Then I'm going to have my circulation rate, my H2S and CO2, and my sweet gas, my reboiler duty, all of this is going to be reported over here. And then all I have to do is click run here and Promax is going to go through each one of these cases and solve them automatically without me having to touch the machine again. So this is going to do 12 solves for me. I have 12 different cases here. It's going to run all 12 of them and give me the results for all of them. This is the ideal way to start an initial design of your amine sweetening unit. Once you do this part, you're going to want to set up more and more scenarios with more and more cases as you get closer and closer to your optimum design. For example, we're going to want to run more cases for different weight percent of MDEA. We're going to run, want to run more rich loadings. We want to run more steam ratios in order to drive this reboiler duty down farther. So that is going to be my initial design that I'm going to do for this particular plant. If you need assistance setting up your scenario tool, there are more videos on how to use the scenario tool in Promax. We also have videos on how to design an amine sweetening unit for each one of these cases. This is a general overview of what your initial design will look like and how to progress through your initial design steps. If you have any more questions, please feel free to look at more YouTube videos and also contact Brian Research and Engineering Support for any help using Promax.